Now, next let's introduce the so-called real valued process. If your output is all real values, then you have a real valued process. And most of the processes we deal with in practice are real valued processes. You may remember from high school math that aside from real numbers, there are also imaginary numbers uh, that involve taking the square root of a negative number, like there's the imaginary number i, which is equal to the square root of negative 1. And from having real numbers and imaginary numbers, you can also have combinations, which we call complex numbers, which have the format a plus bi. This is not really important for what we're doing right now. I'm just reviewing something that you probably learned a long time ago. So anyway, these complex numbers have a real component and an imaginary component. And so you can have random variables that are complex random variables, and you can have random variables that are real random variables. And so the full set of all the random variables you can have are called general random variables. So some of them are countable, like the real random variables are countable, and the complex random variables are not countable. Anyway, even though general random variables includes real random variables and complex random variables, most of the time we deal with real random variables. And similarly here, most of the time we deal with real values. So we have real valued processes most of the time. And so we won't really cover complex valued processes in this course. Now for the real value valued function and for the stationary process we talked about earlier, we can introduce the following parameters. The first parameter is the mean function. It's very important here to see that this is different than in general statistics. In general statistics, you don't have a t. When you talk about the mean, you just say expected value of x equals mu. That's it. Mu. Why? Because there's only one mu. Time series is different from that in that your mu may depend on time. So therefore you have a mu t, that's called a mean function. And the same applies to the variance function. In contrast to general statistics, your variance may depend on time. So therefore you have a variance function. And similarly for the covariance function between zt1 and zt2, this differs from your definition of covariance in general statistics, and the only difference is that in time series, the covariance may depend on time, so it's a covariance function. So this is more complicated than in general statistics. In general statistics, you just have one covariance. And of course, another function is the autocorrelation function. Autocorrelation, to me, is a standardization of autocovariance, much like correlation is a standardization of covariance. You know that with correlation, you have something that's uh, free of units. It's a number between negative 1 and positive 1, right? Even though the corresponding covariance uh, can be something like, uh, let's say you're looking at uh, height, height and weight, how they relate of various people. And so you have units for the covariance of being feet times pounds or something like that. Uh, whereas you would get rid of those units when you create the correlation variable from the covariance variable because you're, you divide by the product of standard deviation, standard deviation of height, standard deviation of weight, so you'd have feet times pounds over feet times pounds, you'd end up with no units at all. So similarly with autocorrelation and autocovariance, autocovariance being what we call the covariance function in a time series, you're taking autocovariance and you're dividing by uh, product of standard deviations, but instead of the product of standard deviations of two different variables, it's product of standard deviations of the same variable at different times. So at time, you know, standard deviation at time one, standard deviation at time two. So again, it takes out the um, the units though. Uh, so like if your covariance was in, let's say, days squared, uh, you'd have days squared divided by standard deviation in days times standard deviation in days divided by, essentially divided by days squared. So you end up with no units again. Now, what's important here is, for a strictly stationary process, your mu t is actually equal to mu. It doesn't depend on time very much. It becomes a constant. Why? Because you see that the distribution at a particular time is the same as the distribution at any other particular time. So therefore, the mean at a particular time is equal to the mean at another time. So therefore, this is independent of time. So for a strictly stationary process, your mean is independent of time, your variance is independent of time, and your covariance only depends on the time difference. 
Okay, covariance and correlation only depend on the time difference. That's why you see in sections 2.5.2 and 2.5.3 in the textbook that covariance is denoted as gamma k, because it's dependent on k, and that the correlation, the autocorrelation, is denoted as rho k, because it's correlation dependent on k again, the time difference. The autocovariance and autocorrelation only depend on the time difference k. And if it's strictly stationary, this is always true. In other words, if you have a strictly stationary process, then find that the autocovariance and the autocorrelation only depend on the time difference k. However, if you find yourself a process in which autocovariance and autocorrelation only depend on the time difference k, it does not necessarily imply that you have complete stationarity. It doesn't work like that. It's not that simple. So don't make the mistake of jumping to that conclusion. So that means that if your requirement is only in terms of both mean and variance, etc., and by etc., I mean covariance, correlation, not in terms of the whole distribution, then we call the process weakly stationary. Weakly stationary. And especially if this only holds true for moments up to and including the second order moment, that's covariance, right? Covariance means a second order moment. Then we call the process second order order weekly stationary. We can also refer to a second order weekly stationary process as a covariant stationary process or as a process that's stationary in the wide sense. So second order weekly stationary, covariant stationary, and stationary in the wide sense, these three terms all mean the same thing.